Good morning. Good morning, everyone. Thank you for joining us today uh, for this fantastic event. My name is Jason Wilson. I'm the Vice President of Student Academic Success here at Mott Community College. And, behalf, and on behalf of the entire Mott Community College family, we are very pleased and honored uh, to welcome home Mott Community College's distinguished alumni, one of the distinguished alumni, uh, Dr. William Picard. Uh, Dr. Picard is here today to discuss his book uh, and lessons from his book, Millionaire Moves, uh, The Seven Proven Principles of Entrepreneurship. And today's event with Dr. Picard is sponsored by the Foundation for Mott Community College, whose purpose uh, is to enhance the quality of education and opportunity in this community. Uh, before we get started, I would like to thank all of you joining us today via live stream. Uh, as you know, we are uh, doing a lot of business remotely uh, during the uh, pandemic, but it has not stopped us. As you know, our motto for this year is Mott will never stop. Uh, oh. so thank you for joining us on uh, Mott College TV. Uh, for this session, it is not too late to submit questions. Uh, you can submit your questions via email to foundation at mcc. Dot edu. Some of you may have submitted some questions already, but I'm sure you're going to have uh, lots of other questions as uh, our speaker uh, takes the floor. Finally, I would be remiss if uh, I did not take the time uh, to acknowledge the primary organizer of this event, uh, and that would be Mrs. Lynetta Coney. Uh, and the entire foundation team. So thank you very much, uh, Mrs. Lanetta. So the purpose of today's event, uh, we are here uh, to celebrate a, a true pioneer, a trailblazer, and a mover and a shaker that comes from our community. You will hear his extensive biography later in the event, uh, and you'll, I'm sure, realize that by all measures, uh, Dr. William Picard, or Bill as he prefers, has a very, or has had a very inspirational and successful career. Uh, there is an Arabic proverb that states that if you have much, give of your wealth, uh, if you have little, give of your heart. And at Mott, we know all too well uh, that Bill gives us of both his wealth and heart, as today's program is really a testimony to that generosity. As one of the inaugural benefactors of MCC's Talented Men of Today program, better known as TMOT, uh, Bill is helping the college close educational achievement gaps amongst our men of color. Uh, we can think of no better way to celebrate Bill and his patronage than to showcase as a part of the program today uh, a recent success st uh, story from the TMOT program. So I'd like you to sit back, uh, enjoy today's program, ask questions. Uh, and for more on, on this particular uh, TMOT program, Bill, his legacy, and to formally start our program, I'd like to introduce the president of my community, Ooh. Dr. Beverly Walker Graffia. Dr. Beverly. Well, good morning. How are you? This is such a great and exciting morning. Uh, we have uh, one of our sons coming back to share with you uh, really exactly the kinds of things you need to know in order to be successful. And he has been quite successful. Uh, he has uh, been around uh, many, many years with the college, uh, sharing his knowledge and, and as Jason has shared with us, uh, doing some great things that have helped us to push our agenda 
for student success for everyone. One of the things that I'm so pleased that he really wanted to support early on was the closing uh, the achievement grab, which was a program to help uh, our students uh, that are uh, primarily African American males uh, to be supported and to support them all the way to a credential. One of those is here today uh, to talk about uh, the great success that he has had. Uh, I remember him when, when he was just a Flint Northern High School graduate, and then he was just an associate in arts with uh, high honors graduate from Mont Community College. And I even remember when he told me, Miss Dr. Beverly, you know, I, I, I got my degree from University of Michigan Flint uh, in business administration. And he has just gone on to do great things. And he has had that foundation from the TMOT program, uh, which is a part of the CTAG. And now he is the senior program director at the YMCA of Greater Flint. And I was very proud when he came in to meet, we, meet with me with the new director to kind of share the vision of where they were going and what they were doing. And I said, that's my guy, Jalen Nunn. So Jalen, why don't you share with the audience? Hello, everybody. Thank you so much, Dr. walker Griffith. Um, and I want to say a thank you to Dr. Picard for the opportunity to be a part of the TMOP program. Um, it was very influential in, in my matriculation through my community college. And I remember the most uh, significant moment in the TMOP program was when we were afforded the opportunity um, due to your donation to attend the Black, Brown, Black, Brown, and College Bound uh, Summit in Tampa, Florida. And you... A lot of people don't believe me when I say this, but when I say that that was a life changing experience, I mean, me being from Flint and getting a chance to to visit a new place and attend a conference and see so many people who look like me when, you know, I'm usually on campus with a lot of people who don't look like me and you know, they, don't, they don't have the same uh, challenges or ambition that I may have and they don't know how to relate their experiences to me. But when I'm looking at people who look like Dr. Picard with this with this level of experience and they're telling me the career pathways they took. And that was when I found out that I wanted to go into public administration. That's, that, that helped me dial in my focus on what I wanted to do to help my community in the city of Flint. And I just want to say, uh, just thank you so much for that. And what it led to was me, um, even though I continue uh, my focus in business, um, I, I initially, when I came to my, was going into graphic design. So I said, you know what, let me, let me continue with the business degree because I don't want to spend money on classes that I've already taken. But um, I, I decided when I do go back, I will specialize in uh, public administration and continue to find ways to um, inspire the children in my city to to give back in the in the ways of community advocacy and higher education because those things have changed my life so much. So I won't draw out the time. I just want to say thank you, thank you, and thank you again for just the opportunity because it was such a life changing and impactful opportunity. Wow, Jalen, I, I appreciate your gratefulness. Uh, you know that it's important to always say thank you to the people that have gone before you uh, to really lay out and to ensure that you have what you need in order to move forward as a young man. So, yes, I And I would be remiss if I didn't admit um, that when we went to uh, Tampa, as a result of the conference, we, um, me and the five peers that were selected to go with me, we came back and we decided to host our own community forum like the one that we attended. And of course, we couldn't make it as grand a scale, you know, with as many people, but we hosted a men of color empowerment forum so that we can, you know, host a panel of people who look like us and other professionals at my and around the city of Flint and answer the questions about uh, changing the narrative around black and brown males in higher education. So that was, that was just something, another notch on the resume, another experience that we could share um, with other people, man. And it was just, it was so dope. <laughs> you know, I, was still, I still get giddy thinking about it right now. <laughs> it really was. It really was. I was so proud of you all as I enjoyed it. 
So now uh, we have our, our family member is home, our, our son, uh, Dr. Picard. Uh, he, like I said, is no stranger uh, to the college campus. He is the chairman and executive founder of GAA Manufacturing and Supply Chain Management, GAA New Ventures. He's the co-managing partner of MGM Grand Detroit Casino, the CEO of Bearwood Management McDonald's, and the co-owner of five Black-owned newspapers. Dr. Picard's 48th entrepreneurial career began as a McDonald's franchisee in Detroit. And since its founding in 1989, GAA has generated, listen to this, more than $5 billion in sales with eight plants in the U.S. and Canada and service corporations such as Boeing, Mercedes-Benz, Ford, General Motors, Chrysler, Delphi, Johnson Controls, Starbucks, Home Depot, and Merck Pharmaceutical. He has such a long resume that I, I'm, I'm not going to say anything else except that he does hold, he does hold a degree from Mont Community College. <laughs> and then he went to Western Michigan University with a BA uh, degree and a master's degree from University of Michigan and from The Ohio State University, he received a PhD. Dr. Picard, please come in your own way. The world is not fair. The world is not fair, but God is. And my presence today epitomizes the fact that God is able. Now, Brother Nunn, I need your help, young man, because, you know, I grew up in Canaan Baptist Church. And being a Baptist, I have a proclivity uh, to talk too long. So, Brother Nunn, I want you, when I get to 12 minutes, give me a shout out or a wave or something so we can wrap it up. Because I think the most important thing that we can accomplish today is uh, a Q&A, just a reflection on where we are today as a people and the kinds of things that I think are applicable to this unique moment, not only in America, not only in Black America, but indeed the world. So let me say firstly that um, I'm a graduate of Flint Northern. And I grew up on 742 East McClellan Street, near the corner of North Street and McClellan. I have a profound belief. I have a profound belief. No matter where you're from, no matter what zip code you're born in, I believe that anybody from anywhere can accomplish anything. Now, I know that sounds like pop psychology or some preacher trying to get you to send $5 in an envelope. I don't need no money. But I want you to know beyond a shadow of a doubt, I believe that anybody from anywhere can accomplish anything. If you put the work in, the work is critical. Now, obviously, some people can pick up a book the night before a calculus exam and get an A or B. Some can study maybe a couple of days and get a B or an A. Then there's Bill Pickard, who has to get the Bible out, spend three weeks prepping for the exam, and then pray for strong C's. I am, Dr. Beverly, a solid C student. Unfortunately, I was not an A, B student. But God gave me something that might be more important than the gray matter for A's and B's. He gave me a grit and a grime and a desire to help my family and Black folk that exceeds all that other stuff. 
So I say to you strongly, young brothers and sisters, strongly, you must put the work in. Now, I'm a, I'm a seasoned citizen, but I love music. I just love music. And if you look at so-called successful musicians, like, well, let me give you a quote. Let me give you an example. Now, I know I'm going off key, but that's okay, Dr. Beverly. I'll bring it back home. But now when I get to 12 minutes, you got to do this, you know. Um, Travis Scott got a hot thing going with McDonald's today. I still own McDonald's. I love McDonald's. That's what gave me my start. And I praise it. I don't eat there a lot anymore, but I like it. Travis Scott got this McDonald's meal. And he has accountants and handlers, I'm sure, all over the world. But I don't know what they paid him to sign up for this commercial and using his name and using his image. I'm sure he got paid now. The bro, the bro got paid, I'm sure of that. But I wonder, was the pay futuristic or was the pay today? And that's the way our life is. Am I trying to maximize today or am I looking to the future? I am now working on the biggest deal of my life here in Detroit. And I'm almost 80 years old. I'm working on the biggest deal of my life. So I hope Travis Scott said to McDonald's what Beyonce said when she did the big concert, I think they call it Chichello or something like that. You know what that sister did? She said, hey, y'all, listen, let's, let's make this easy. Just give me the minimum fee to come there and record my act and record what I do, and you just pay me the minimum green fees. But I want the rights to my video, my music, and my performance. Because now that she owns her stuff, she can sell it to Netflix. She can sell it to CBS. And every time it is shown none, she does what? She gets paid. So I hope Travis Scott said, you know, McDonald's, listen, I, I enjoy your product. You helped a few black folk here and there. Here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to come in for the minimum fee. But I want you to give me $10 million with the McDonald's stock paid in 2040. I believe in a product that's strong. And by the 2040, that $10 million might be what? $200 million, you know? So I'm trying to say that in life and in business, that sometimes the immediacy is not the real key to the game. And if you look at a guy that we all know, and I know I got 12 minutes, son, um, you look at Eminem. I love music, Dr. Beverly, so don't, don't hate me yet. Eminem was around Detroit, white boy, rapping. It's pretty good. I'd heard about him. I went to hear him one night. You know, kind of nervous being an old man in there, but I went to hear him. Slim Shady wasn't bad. But he didn't have that X factor. And what did his handlers do? They took him to California to Dr. Dre, the master, the PHMD in the game of music and rap. And when Dr. D Dr. Dre got through with Eminem, choo, the white boy was number uno. And then there was a young man known as Usher. Like most 12, 13 year old kids, he could dance, he could sing a little bit. His mother lived in Chattanooga, Tennessee. But somebody said, girl, this, this boy, girl, this guy, this boy got it. But he ain't gonna blow up in Chattanooga. She took him to, they moved the family to Atlanta, Georgia, and had him on this typical teenage talent show that we used to have at Burston and Northern and Stewart. She took him to a talent show, and guess what? Babyface saw him and said, whoa! And the rest is history for Usher. They put the work in. But my favorite one is this white boy. I, hate, I don't mean white boy negatively now. Young white boy from Canada, Justin Bieber's from Canada. He up in Canada rapping, you know, in the, in the cold weather, you know. And somebody said, "This boy got something." What does his family do? They pick this white boy up from Canada 
and take him to Atlanta. It's the usher. Do what you got to do with it. And today, I, I would suggest to you, for many reasons, some that are unfair, Justin Bieber's net worth is more than Usher. What is my point? You must put the work in. But quickly, let me just say this to you about life and the so-called seven principles of entrepreneurship. It could be the seven principles of life. Now, no, don't forget, 12 minutes is not. The first one is relationships. Who you hang with, who you lock up with is critical for your future. And I would hope and say to the young ladies that it's even more critical for you because you got to hang with people that have a similar dream and similar aspirations. You know, relationships are like an elevator. A good relationship will take you up and bad relationships will take you down. So I would beg of you, I'm not talking about being uppity, I'm not talking about being snotty and all that stuff, but don't hang with losers. Hang with people that have a vision for themselves and trying to do something with their life. I'll give you a quick example from my life. I went to the, one of the best community colleges in the world, Mott Community College, uh, back in the day, and unfortunately I was so smart I had to stay there almost three years because the first year, Dr. Beverly, I, this is funny. I had these courses like 091, 092, 093, and I was killing it, none. I was getting A's and B's. I said, hey, man, look at this. My man said, Pick, that ain't real classes. That's play like college. That ain't real college, man. That's remedial. Duh. But then the second semester came, and I kind of got it on track. And then I met two black men that changed my life. Dr. Albert Rogers, PhD in psychology from Minnesota in 1945. And he was at my community college teacher in 1960. In other words, Mr. James A. Randall, these two black men just wrapped me in their bosom and beat me <laughs> and beat me into success. So it took me almost three years to get out of my college. But after that, hey, I'm ready for the world. That's a singing group from, the, from Flint. I'm ready for the world. When I left Flint, I was ready for the world. I go to Western Michigan. Unfortunately, didn't have any money. My mom and daddy you know, did the best they could. But I wound up living in a dorm called Vandercook. That we call it Hungry Hall because there were no meals in that, that dorm. You had to get up every morning and go hustle, food, breakfast, lunch, and dinner. But my roommate was a man named Dennis Wayne Archer. He was a special ed major, and I was a social work major. 30, 20, 40 years later, Dennis Wayne Archer goes to a law school. He gets on the Supreme Court. He becomes mayor of the city of Detroit. He's an alpha. I'm an alpha. We always stayed in touch. MGM comes to town to build a casino. They said, Mr. Mayor, we need a black partner. Can you think of someone that's tall, dark, handsome, and successful? He said, Bill Pickard. You know, people always say, how did you, how did you become co-managing partner of MGM? It was a relationship when I was 19 years old. Dennis Wayne Archer. So relationships are important. And quickly. I'll spend a minute on, on money. Now, don't get this twisted. Money is not my God. But because I'm from a clutter street, I do put it up there with oxygen and water. You know, it's kind of important to me, you know. But I would just strongly urge you to understand that the business of America is business. And I don't apologize. I am a social worker. I believe in the least of God's children having the benefits of this wonderful planet Earth. I will always do that as long as I'm breathing. But the business world excites me because there ain't nothing but like the games at Burston and over on St. John. It's just the, the good guys and the bad guys. And if you can figure it out, 
you can participate in one of the greatest things in America, and that's the free enterprise system. And I, again, would strongly go back to Beyonce, how she told her, no, y'all don't pay me no money. Just give me the rights to my stuff because I'm going to go forward. None of my 12 minutes yet. 12 minutes, okay. And I would spend two minutes on failure. And I'll just say this. There's nobody on this call, phone, in the room, in the sky, in the cloud that has failed more than Bill Picard. I was not an A, B student. I did not come to Mock Community College prepared for college. I did not do well at Flint North. I had done everything wrong that could be wrong, except I never went to jail. But I had wood shop, metal shop, personal math, Lord have mercy, history. I mean, I just didn't do well. But again, Mock Community College put the training wheels on me and gave me a chance in life. And I would just beg of you that the best time to start to correct your life, to fit your life is right now. And by the way, I, I'm a C student, but there's a book everybody should read that I love. The author of the book says that A students work for the C students and the B students work for the government. I'm a solid C student, but I hire A students because I want everybody around me to be much smarter than I am so we all can grow and lift up together. But failure is real. It's, um, let me just say this, failure is never fatal. It's never fatal. It will not kill you. If it were, I'd be dead a thousand times. Failure is not fatal. And success is not final. I've known a lot of people that blown up had all kinds of money. I won't even talk about, what was that rapper's name? Uh, MC Hammond, all the money they had. I mean, making money is easy in America. Keeping it is a problem. People win the lottery every day. Look at them 10, 15, 20 years later, they did broke. So failure is an intricate part of life. All I ask you to do is remember what Denzel Washington said. If you fall down nine times, just get up 10 times. That's all I want you to do. And lastly, I close with something that is an important part of my life, and that's faith. F-A-I-T-H. Yeah, I, I went to Canaan Baptist Church. Yeah, I went to church because my mom and my dad and my grandmama made me go. Not once a Sunday, not twice a Sunday, but sometimes three and four times a day on Sunday. I don't go every day now. I watch a pillow rest TV. I love guys like Freddie Haynes. I love T.D. Jakes. But let me tell you something. When all the biblical scholars finished with all their discourse on life and Christianity and being a Muslim or being this or being that, I believe for me, it boils down to something very simple. I try to treat people the way that I want to be treated. But fundamentally, I believe in life, whether it's business, whether it's social work, or whether it's at Mott Community College, whether you got a PhD or no degree, that you shall reap what you sow. When you sow goodness, I believe goodness come back. And when you show so bad stuff, I believe it follows you a long way. So I'm honored to be a part of this mock community and the family. And I don't know if I'm a son or a grandson, but whatever I is, I'm proud of it. And my own faith is very simplistic. I have a strong belief in black folk. I try to respect all people, black, white, blue or green, Red hats, make America greater again. I, I respect everybody. But I have an obligation to people that look like me. And I try to honor it every day. And I have a special obligation to people who come from Flint, Michigan. I don't apologize for it. Uh, I don't wear it on my shoulder or my sleeve. But I know when somebody calls me or I get a word that somebody's from Flint, I got to do something. I got to help. I got to try to help because that's what made me who I am today. Thank you, Dr. Beverly.
Thank you. Thank you. Oh my goodness. That was, um, I, I, I don't have the words because the wisdom that you just imparted is just so necessary, not just for our young people, but I think for all of us to remember. Um, hard work, relationships, those things that we all need if we're going to be successful in life. So, you know, thank you. Uh, we just want to sit at your feet, Dr. Picard, because we know that if we do that, that we'll be okay. And yes, you are not a grandson. You are a son of my <laughs> college. <laughs> I accept. Thank you. Thank you. So we have about 20 minutes that we're going to open this up for questions and uh, the questions to ask, it's down here at the bottom. You can write to foundation at mcc.edu, and we will start asking those questions now. But I want to start with Jalen, since you're sitting right here with us. What's, what's the first question you want to ask? And, and it's perfect because the, the Dr. Uh, Picard story sounds a lot like the Jalen Nunn story. <laughs> I wasn't I wasn't ultimately successful in high school. Mine was more due to my work ethic, which I, I kind of established at my community college. And that's how I got to those high honors and stuff like that. But my question to you is, you know, what's the next step, right, for me? So where I'm at right now, it sounds like I'm following the beginning steps, building those relationships. And that's what's gotten me to where I'm at. I'm putting the work in. But I want to know what's that next step in order to, to get to that, that, that financial level where I'm able to help bless others. Well, uh, I, I think very seldom is there one direct path. It Sometimes life takes you in a multiplicity of directions and you wind up where you're supposed to be. As they say in church, God will order your steps. But I happen to be passionate, Jalen. I'm passionate about education. So I don't care if you take a course in uh, uh, Henry David Thoreau, or if you take a course on uh, George Washington Carver, but I'm not talking about necessarily a PhD or a master's, all that. That's good. If you can get that, go. But man, read, read, be hungry for knowledge. Because, you know, the world is changing so fast today, man. What you learned yesterday could be totally irrelevant. I just read yesterday this guy with the Tesla battery. This dude said, <laughs> this dude said they're going to have a a battery coming out that can run a car for X number of years and light up your house for Y number of years. That's scary. So read, man. And I would say, save some money. I don't care what you make. If you make a dollar, say something. And the passion for learning and knowledge and um, try to hook up with people and organizations and have relationships that are going places, like the why. You know, know the history of the why. How did the why start? Why is it YMCA Christian Association? Was it, they, they, ever let, they didn't let black folk in. How did they handle the black thing at the why? How did they handle the black women when they wouldn't let the black women at the why? Let me give you this. I love history. Don't get me started, Jay. But now there's a brother out here named Robert Smith. He's a billionaire. He happens to be an alpha man. He's a billionaire. He's based in California, but he grew up in Denver, Colorado. In Denver, Colorado, in the 1950s and 1960s, he grew up. But the black folk in Denver had a resort named Lincoln Hills, like we had a resort in Idlewild. Ask your mama and your grandmama about Idlewild, Michigan. It was a bomb, bro. It was, it was a bomb. That's when your know, black folks had their own stuff. Now I don't know what we have. But anyway, Lincoln Hills was in right outside of Denver, Colorado. And because the YWCA would not let black women, black girls go to their camp, they would go to Lincoln Hills camp in Denver, Colorado. And I will just clue saying this, man, if you don't know your history, if you don't know the value of you as a person, I think you have a long day because you can't tell me black folks don't possess excellence. Much like I hope you can't tell the Polish kid that Polish people don't possess excellence. But I know my black history and a lot of it 
I learned in Georgia before I moved to Flint. But Dr. Rogers and Mr. Randall beat it in me. And I'm, this is a plug, Dr. Beverly. I have a new book coming out entitled 100 Outstanding African-American Success Stories in Business, 1850 to 1950. And it's a story about successful Black people, not necessarily entrepreneurs, but just Black people who were in business between 1850 and 1950. Because oftentimes we think Black folks just went in business last week. That was successful businesses in Flint when I was growing up as a kid in the 60s, you know. So, Jalen, stay on the course, brother. So you were just talking about your mentors, and you have a question here that says, what attracted you to the two mentors that you mentioned, and how should uh, youth go about selecting a mentor? Well, the, those two guys were probably the only two Black men that I knew that were on faculty at Mott Community College at that time. Dr. Rogers was crazy. He was a psychologist, and he was just in your face. I mean, I hate to say it, back in the day, I had a process, you know, whatever that was. And I remember, I didn't know this man. I didn't know this man for nobody. He walks up to me and says, hey, are you an entertainer? Uh, you a dancer? You a gigolo? What, what is that? That, that mess in your hair, boy. Stop. Be a man. And walked away. Two days later, Doc, I had a haircut. And that began the relationship with him that lasted until the day he died. And he had asked me to speak at his funeral, and I didn't know this. I went and I, you know, I stayed in touch with him. But I had his funeral, Dr. Beverly. I discovered that his birthday was January 28th. 1909 or something like that. And my birthday is January 28th. But, and so I, that's how I loved him, not like him, loved him. And Mr. Randall was just a nice guy. He talks sociology. He was just a nice guy. But Dr. Rogers, in your face. But if you can see, it was hammer time, you know? I would find people who are successful, find people who are doing things in their community, Find people who are nice. Find people who care. And you're probably on your way. The next question is, there are many professional athletes and actors who have come from uh, our city, but very few come back and give back. What do you recommend as to what we can do to get them to come back and share their experiences and contributions with us? Well. I'm sure there are a lot that help that we don't know about, I don't know about. Uh, I just say, hey, we got to work with what we have. Uh, I have friends who are from Flint. Uh, Herb Washington owns about 40 McDonald's. Herb is one of my best friends in the world. We grew up together in Parkland and uh, Burston Fieldhouse. But, you know, I ain't worried about folks that don't want to help. I hope they will. I hope they'll come help. But, you know, you got to do what you got to do. And I always say, I never tell another man how to feed his family. And if you're going to put all your money in your family, you ain't going to try to help nobody else. Hey, God bless you. But I just believe strongly that the more you sow, the more you will harvest. You will reap what you sow. There's no way in the world that I am supposed to be as blessed as I am financially and otherwise being a solid C social work student. God had to say, I'm going to make an example out of this guy. I'm going to show you how a dumb guy can be wealthy. And I believe that. So I wish there were more people. I hear stories about guys that won't help out and all that. But let's focus on what we have. Let's, let's try to get people to help. But let's work with what we have. So the next question is, what is the importance of philanthropy in your life and can you give some examples of the kinds of projects that you like to support? I'm education because that's what changed my life. Uh, a lot of stuff in education. I don't want to go sound like I'm doing this and that, but I've done, I probably done more than most people with my little money 
But that's okay. Because the more I give, the more God gives me. And But there are some things that I feel strong. I didn't go to Morehouse. I didn't go. To, I'm from Georgia. I didn't go to Morehouse. But growing up in this little town called LaGrange, every little black boy was told, you're going to go to Morehouse. <laughs> you're going to be a preacher or a doctor or a lawyer. And so my cousin now, who's also from LaGrange, he owned McDonald's. We gave uh, $2 million to uh, Morehouse recently. Now. The one I'm kind of proud of a little bit is that at Western Michigan, as I told you, Dennis Archer was my roommate, and that was a third guy in our group named Ron Hall. Now, Ron Hall was an all-A student in mathematics, but he was an alpha. And unfortunately, he passed away a couple of years ago. Uh, but I did donate, um, I think it was $5 million to uh, Western, and we have two dorms there named uh, Hall, Archer, Picard, East, and Hall, Archer, Picard, West. And I've given a little bit of money to Mott, not enough to turn the lights on, but, um, you know, who knows what the future might hold. Well, we're very grateful for what you have provided because it's helped us with products like Jalen Nunn. So well, Jalen is on it. He is. He is. And, uh, I tell that, uh, Ms. Cloney, give Jalen my number. Let's stay in touch, Jalen. So um, what was the inspiration? Well, let me ask it this way. How many books have you authored and how do you get inspired to write those books? There's only been, uh, I would say two and a half, uh, maybe three. Um, I, I have this passion for history. Uh, I, I think when you read about, and I ain't mad at white folks, some of my best friend are white people, but when I read about black women who started a bank with 10 cents and built it into a bank that still exists today, Miss Maggie Walker, how did she do it? And when I read about black men who became multi, multi millionaires and they started selling ice and coal, and when I read about things like uh, your hometown, Tulsa, Oklahoma. But now I've fallen in love with, um, oh my God, uh, I found a bank down in um, Oklahoma uh, in a little black town, starts with a B, and I'm focusing on researching it. And this little town um, is in Oklahoma, one of the, a few all black towns. I think there are about 40 of them. You know that, the Oklahoma history. But it's talking Bowling. 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 And uh, let me tell you quickly, Bowley had a bank. And, and the big bank robber back in the day was a boy named, white boy named Pretty Boy Floyd. And they decided to go rob the bank in Bowley, Oklahoma. Them black folk killed most of them. They didn't get no money out of that bank. So Google one day Bowley, Oklahoma bank robbery. And, and, and the, all that, that's in my new book, uh, The 100 Things About Black People in Business. So I'm, I'm passionate about this story. Because nobody, not nobody, most people don't know of the tremendous things that we have accomplished in business, in Black America, in spite of white people, in spite of Black people, in spite of no money, we have done some remarkable things. So it sounds like, uh, Dr. Picard, as you speak, that you're a family man. How did you balance a successful career in raising a family? Huh. I failed. My wife left me. <laughs> uh, yeah, my, my ex-wife is my best friend. She's from Flint, Vivian Rogers Picard. But I was, uh, that's a good question because I made some mistakes. And I was giving a lecture at Ohio State a couple of years ago on my book. And now this little, uh, and I'm from Georgia, and this little white girl raised, uh, raised a question. She said, ah, yeah, okay, I'll read about you now, and you blown up, and this and that. She said, but when you first started, what was your goal? When you first started as a social worker, what was your goal? And, and Madam President, I kind of teared up because my first goal was to get my mother and my Aunt Kareem two homes. And I'm sitting here saying to you today, 100 years later, whatever it is, that my mother had three homes before I owned one. 
I didn't own a home until I was 40 something years of age. I didn't marry until I was 19, until I was 52. I spent too much time trying to build businesses and trying to uh, accumulate wealth and security. And I might have missed some things. But on the other hand, I have a beautiful daughter who's 27 years old. She went to Spelman. She had a terrific accident at homecoming where she was burned severely. She is a graduate of Williams Mary Law School. She now lives in Detroit. She's cute as a button like a mama. And uh, she is a lawyer that specializes in mergers and acquisition. And I'm trying to find out who's, who's black with a lot of determination. And hopefully he's an alpha. <laughs> Did I answer the question, Doc? I hope I did. You did. You did. So the next question is, for future success, what would you recommend getting a degree or a skilled trade? Oh, boy. I forgot to tell you this joke in my notes, uh, Madam President, but I got to tell this. It might take me one minute. Later. <laughs> but that was, a, that was a story goes that this man, uh, his wife called him one Saturday morning. Hey, John, come down here quick. The basement done flooded. So he come downstairs Saturday morning. You know, he go downstairs, and sure enough, there's water all in his basement. So he calls the plumber. Say, hey, can you come out on Saturday? He says, sure, I'll come out on Saturday. I work seven days a week when I get a call. So the guy comes out. He goes down. He looks at the job. He says, well, you got a problem, but I can, I can take care of it in about an hour, hour and a half. He says, okay, get it fixed quick. My wife is driving me crazy. So he goes downstairs and he stays about 45 minutes. He come up and says, okay, everything is all set. You're in good shape. And by the way, I'm giving you an 18-month warranty on this job. And you owe me $675. He said, what? He said, you owe me $675. He said, mister, you are a plumber. He said, I know what I am. I, I took care of the job. He said, a doctor doesn't make that much. He says, you're right. I used to be a doctor. So my point is that there's a lot of money in being a carpenter and a bricklayer and a roofer and all that stuff. So don't just not take a look at skilled trades. Don't just not take a look at being a great welder or a great plumber. So they are any way you want to go, there's opportunities. But now money is not the only thing that matters in life. I love reading. I love people. So I probably wouldn't have made a good plumber or a good roofer. But there are a lot of people that are doing. Mr. R. O. Ridgway was an electrician in Flint. And he, he went to Tuskegee, became an electrician. But eventually he owned a big construction company. And he built buildings all over Michigan. Do both or do one. So the next question uh, is about Millionaire Moves, the name of your book. Being a millionaire seems to be um, really a goal for a lot of our youth. Is that really something you should strive to be? Well, I mean, anybody could be a millionaire now. I mean, millionaire is just a million dollars. That ain't, that ain't, that ain't, that ain't, that ain't that ain't going to take care of you for life, you know. But you have to start someplace. And that's why I told my new friend up there, Brother Nunn, no, if it, no matter what he makes, say something. If you make $300 a week, y'all say 30 No, not 30 $300. Yeah, 30 You, you got to save some money. And I don't know whether there's a number on it that makes you – you know, successful or not successful, but I can tell you this. If you make a hundred dollars and you spend a hundred dollars, I can tell you where you're headed in the wrong direction. And um, my granddaddy, uh, God bless his soul, over there on McClellan Street had a theory, he called it two arm living. He said, everybody ought to have a job and a hustle. Now, I don't mean drugs and, and stuff like that, you know, but uh, one of my uncles, uh, he, this guy did nothing but fix screen doors on the side. I had another uncle that had a bar. So you got to save some money. And I'll say this, and I'm not, I ain't mad at nobody. 
But I normally tell people, you got to find a way in America to make money while you sleep. You got to find a way in America to make money while you sleep. Because if you don't, you'll probably work until you die. Great, great, great answers. This is the last question. So it looks like, or it sounds like, um, that a lot of us are really looking at today as our focus and not that future view that you talked about. How do we change that? Well, you know, you, uh, you know I, I always say without vision, even the Bible says without vision, the people will perish. And um, I, I Jay-Z, uh, here I go again, music. Jay-Z at 18 years of old, 18 years of age, wrote a, wrote a line in one of his rap songs. He said that your, that your uh, vision must be greater than the window you're looking through. And most of us grew up in, you know, little bitty houses with little bitty windows. So if you think about it, if you only look through that kind of window, you look at a very small thing, but your vision must be greater than the window you're looking through. And I believe very strongly, Madam President, that one of the things, now I'm an only child, but I like posses. I have four or five guys that we've been through everything together. And I just enjoy the fact that we've been up together, we've been down together, and we've been through it together. So I tend to say, get yourself two or three people and make a bond to just hang together and help each other. One might... My, uh, Ron Hall was an all-A student in mathematics, but he still hung out with me as a social worker and a C student, you know? So I, I just believe that you have to be around people that have a shared vision about what they want to be and become in life. Well, thank you so much. Um, I've learned some things uh, this morning, and you know that I always appreciate hearing and talking with you and having a great discussion. And I know that the students and the others that are out there listening have learned as well uh, some things about what we need to do in order to prosper. But I, I loved hearing relationships are so important to everything that we do. Being kind, considerate, and caring. It really helps as you are moving through the process. So. I appreciate you. You know that. And um, I'm just so pleased that you decided to join us today. It, it's been an awesome experience for us all. And I'm going to turn it over to Jalen, who would like to say something. I just want to say thanks again, Dr. Picard. And uh, I, I do have a meeting that I have to get to at 12 noon. So I, I was I was sending a couple messages because I thought I was going to have to leave before we wrapped all the way. But um, I just wanted to make sure I expressed my thanks. And I definitely do want to connect with uh, Ms. Coney to get your, your number and add you to my network. And that would be so valuable. And I'm, I'm about to look up every book that you got <laughs> so, I can, so I can start reading, man. I'm, I'm taking that advice soon. <laughs> Thank you, guys. Thank you so much, Dr. Walker Griffith, for all the opportunities, too. Thank you. Okay. Well, thank you very much, Jalen, for joining us. Uh, uh, thank you, Dr. Beverly. Uh, Bill, uh, we got one more thing for you here. It's uh, my pleasure at this time to welcome Brian Larkin, uh, Chief of Staff, City of Flint, representing representing the uh, representing. I'm sorry, the Honorable Sheldon Neal. Brian, thank you, Jason, and. Thank you for uh, Dr. Beverly for allowing us to present and take part in this as well. Uh, I'm speaking today, again, as I mentioned, my name is Brian Larkin. I'm Chief of Staff for Mayor Neely. On behalf of Mayor Neely, uh, he wishes he could be here, but uh, he thought it was probably best if he sent his Chief of Staff, who is also a fellow Viking, uh, Morehouse graduate, and a member of one of the finest fraternities in the world. So we'll get started with uh, the proclamation uh, we have here, and we'll make sure to uh, get
get a copy sent, get the uh, full plaque version sent to you uh, very shortly. So, thank you. Whereas, and I'm going to just uh, briefly go through it so I, for those who are on the stream can know exactly the context of what's put in there. So, whereas, it is on behalf of the citizens of the city of Flint and with great pleasure that I join with my community college in honoring Dr. William F. Picard. And whereas Dr. William F. Picard was raised in Flint and now resides in Bloomfield Hills in Carolina, Dr. Picard, as a philanthropist and entrepreneur, has made several contributions to the Flint community. Most recently, he made a major contribution to my community college, Burston Fieldhouse, and is a major supporter of the Salute to Black Scholars program founded by the Urban League. And whereas Dr. Picard graduated from Flint Community Junior College now known as Mott Community College in 1962. He is chairman of Global Automotive Alliance, co-managing partner of MGM Grand Detroit Casino, CEO of Bearwood Management Company, and co-owner of five Black-owned newspapers. Dr. Picard credits his hometown for providing the foundation for his success and gives additional credit to his mentor for investing in his development when others thought he would not succeed. He wants to see members and students in the greater Flint area to flourish and wants the Flint community schools to consider using his book entitled Millionaire Moves in the Classroom. And whereas Dr. Picard's 35-year entrepreneurial career began as a McDonald's franchisee in Detroit in 1989, he founded an automotive manufacturing company and grew it into Global Automotive Alliance, Logistics and Manufacturing Companies with more than one half billion dollars in sales and eight. I think this, the stream is frozen on Brian. Good. Yeah, I, I think the stream froze on Brian. I think he was concluding the proclamation to you. Good alpha man. Bill. Absolutely. We got him back, Brian. No. You get the gist of it. It's good. I feel better. <laughs> feel good. Right, Never had a good. proclamation from the city of Flint before. So I'm in rare air. Fantastic. Fantastic. And I like your title, by the way, Student Success. I like that. Absolutely. Absolutely. That's what we're about. So everyone, again, we're going to thank Bill with being, Bill for being with us today, Dr. Picard. Uh, uh, you know, continued success, uh, continued. Uh, to you, good luck on that major deal. I'll be reading. I'll be keeping an eye on on the on on what's happening on that. Uh, certainly, thank you, Taylor, for joining us. Uh, of course, Dr. Beverly, and thank all of you for tuning in today. We'll have this. Uh, uh, program recorded and put up and available for all to stream. Uh, so with that, we say good afternoon and have a great day. Thank you.